Hello and welcome. My name is Matthew Anthony and this is my environmental science research presentation on Badger ammunition and the soft prairie. To start with a brief overview of the situation, the Sauk Prairie was once a 14,000 acre natural prairie located south of the Baraboo Bluffs and north of the Wisconsin River. Over time, the prairie has shrank in size due to the effects of human activity. And Badger Ammunition was a U.S. Army ammunition plant that was built over the same area. Originally for use in World War II, the plant had a long service record that spanned the course of three major U.S. conflicts. It was eventually retired in 1997, but its effects still last today. The sheer size of the plant destroyed large portions of the unique natural habitat of the area, and also because of the hazardous processes involved with producing ammunition and the practice of unsafe disposal methods, the ecosystem around badger ammunition has been devastated. Some of the oldest recorded depictions of the Sauk Prairie date as far back as the 1740s. An explorer named John Carver discovered the area and the native Sauk tribe for which it was named. Carver described vast fields of grasses and crops, as well as a village with timber houses and defined dirt streets. The area was in the heart of Ho-Chunk territory, which was open to settlement after the infamous Treaty of 1837, when Ho-Chunk leaders signed away the rest of their land under distress. The conditions of the prairie left the soil fertile and desirable for farmers. Very quickly, the prairie was cultivated for agricultural use and only remained in small, unfarmable patches. Badger Ammunition was originally called Badger Ordnance Works and was built in 1942. The original project called for the use of around 10,500 acres of land dedicated to the facility. And a lot of that land was taken from the surrounding farmers. The plant would produce smokeless powder, rocket powder, and other propellants for use in World War II. It was the largest ammunition plant in the world for its time, and it went on to produce ammunition for the Korean War and the Vietnam War. In 1951, it was reactivated and renovated for use in the Korean War. During this time, the plant began expanding facilities and producing new forms of ammunition, like ball powder. The plant was returned to standby status in 1958 until it was reactivated for the Vietnam War in 1966. By that time, the plant was renamed the Badger Army Ammunition Plant, and the plant was expanded again during this time to try to modernize its production capabilities. The plant was finally retired in 1997 after a long period of standby status. Tens tensions surrounding the Cold War left the U.S. government unsure if they could afford to retire the plant. Here we can examine the long-lasting effects the facility has had on the surrounding environment. Besides the amount of land required to build the plant, badger ammunition took a toll on the ecology of the soft prairie. Due to the nature of producing ammunition, many harmful chemicals were used. The production of nitroglycerin required a solvent that was particularly hazardous. The chemicals were used in such high quantities over such long periods of time that permanent toxic zones were created. This problem was made worse by the well-documented use of unsafe disposal methods and the occurrence of chemical spills. Work was put in to make facilities that helped treat the pollution, but the damage was never reversed. Explosive waste, toxic metals, and chemical solvents are all contributing to the ongoing contamination of the plant. One of the most important effects of that contamination is the contamination of the local groundwater. Cancer-causing chemicals like carbon tetrachloride, trichloroethylene, and dinitrotoluene are still found under the plant. These lasting problems stem from the hesitation by the parties responsible to clean up the air area properly. The responsibility originally fell to the Olin Corporation, who owned the plant before it was shut down. However, the cleanup effort was transferred to SpecPro Incorporation in 2004. And though the ownership of the land eventually went to the Wisconsin DNR, the pollution had been allowed to sit for far too long. Finally, we can take a look at the ongoing efforts to come up with a better use for the land. There are many communities and organizations that have stakes in how the land will be used in the future. A lot of the debate occurs under the Badger Reuse Committee that was created in 2000. 
The committee's goal was to ensure that the local communities had a say in the plans for the area. The parties involved include the Sauk Prairie Conservation Alliance, the FDA through their Dairy Forge Research Center on the site, the Wisconsin DNR, and the Ho-Chunk Nation, who have expressed hopes to restore the prairie and introduce buffalo into the area. Many local townships are also involved in the process. A key issue of the debate is how the current contaminated groundwater is to be cleaned up. With new pockets of contaminated groundwater, groundwater having been found near Merrimack in 2021, this issue has raised immediate concerns. There is also the broader debate on what the intended purpose of the land should be. Groups like the Sauk Prairie Conservation Alliance and the Ho-Chunk Nation stand on the side of restoration and conservation. They hope to limit human activities in the area to low-impact recreational activities like hiking trails. Their main priority is to focus on the cleaning of the remaining pollution so Wisconsin can see the increasingly rare Mesic Prairie begin to make a comeback in the state. The Wisconsin DNR has expressed plans to include facilities for recreational use that are a high impact to the prairie. Shooting ranges, ATV trails, and snowmobile trails are all examples of recreational activities that disturb the wildlife. The USDA Dairy Forage has expressed a desire to be able to maintain and grow their operation in the future. Their scientists study new methods of caring for livestock. Experiments with different methods of feeding and caring for cows are currently underway there. This difficult situation goes to show the importance of practicing environmental sustainability so as to not create another situation like Badger. This can easily present challenges for decades to come. A process like this can be dragged out for long periods of time due to disagreements. There is ongoing litigation between the Sauk Prairie Conservation Alliance and the Wisconsin DNR. The Conservation Alliance claims the Wisconsin DNR violated a written agreement to not have certain recreational activities be in the plan for Badger. Court proceedings are all too common in stories like Badger Ammunition. I hope you enjoyed this presentation on Badger Ammunition and Sauk Prairie.